I thought I'd run through um, kind of how do I start the course in an online virtual world because I thought some people may benefit from it. I've got a lot of like light is coming in. That's okay right now. Um, so when I was initially teaching in the pandemic, I was always lucky that lockdowns always happened after the first day of school. So I was able to meet those students and kind of build that culture. Last quad, I moved over to the fully online schools. So that was the first time where I had to do a course from start to finish where never I never saw the kids face to face ever. And so I knew that building a culture was super important in that course. And so just building that sense of community and that collaboration between people was really important. I got a lot of feedback from the kids saying that the time I took to make that mental a lot to them and really helped them in the course because they learned a lot more because they trusted their peers and they had that kind of network that worked well. So when I'm working through um, my first day, I thought I'd post kind of like my first day schedule or, or like how I pose it to the students just so you could take a look at it too. So basically I give them a structure, especially when they're working online of kind of like where their day should look at. Cause I think that in school I can dictate like you're doing this now, but I think at home it's a little harder to do that. So this helps them kind of manage their time a little bit better. Then um, what I have are the next three sections kind of break into our day. So we have a meeting, lunch break, meeting, and then at home, like after work. So then the first section is meeting one, second section is meeting two, and then the third one is going to be like your after work. And then here I have specifically like what I'm looking for them to hand in to me today. So typically their exit ticket for me is going to be either a reflection on what they did that day a specific question similar like a, a specific piece of what we did that day it can be them explaining or walking through a question that they feel really confident with um, that's kind of how i focus my day here i'll throw in additional resources so this is where like helpful videos and that kind of stuff goes. I don't run tests in the online world. So here I give them sample test questions, which gives students a really good benchmark. So those high achievers or those kids looking for the north of 80 marks really appreciate having these questions here to know kind of what they should be able to do at the end of the day. And then I always have this kind of week at a glance um, where we're going so that they can kind of plan in their minds of where they're coming. And this is where also key information from the board or from the like online school will come drilled down into here with key links in that area. So uh, first thing that I start off with on the first day, uh, you can start off with like cahoots or other team builders, that kind of stuff. I tried this one last time and it worked really, really well. So essentially what happens is on this board, everyone's going to make a copy of this. So I make everybody in the class an editor of this particular document. So, um, and then basically they make their name, they'll make it their own font and their own color. And then what we'll do then after we get started is then I'll have this, would you rather game? So then I'll just put like winter or summer up on the top of this screen. And then they drag their little guy over from the winter side to the summer side, uh, depending on what's their favorite. So it's kind of like a four corners move around activity, but it's virtual. And so everybody's moving their stuff around because it's a shy, like a shared slide. Um, and then you can even dig a little deeper. So for example, in sweet versus savory, then I had them talk about like, what is your actual favorite dish if you had any food? So that's what I'll put on those sides there. Um, so this one I found super effective, takes way longer than you think, like five minutes to get their names up and running. Uh, so bank a good 20, 25 minutes for this activity, but it's a fun one. They really enjoyed it. From there, I'll move into the sample class yearbook. So basically, they're going to make a slide about themselves, introducing themselves to the class. I ask them to use color, um, like videos if they want to, and basically include three things that they want to tell me about themselves. And I include a sample slide of myself on there just so they have a demo. And then in the afternoon, we'll get into a little bit more of like lab stuff. And then the other thing I'm going to try this time around is a glossary. So my students have really, really enjoyed these shared slide decks. So what I'll do is this particular one has, I have 30 kids in the class, so there are 30 terms on this. Each kid is given a slide and then they work through that slide over 45 minutes or so. And so basically they compile all the research and everything they find out and learn. And then everybody, we go over the slide deck together as a class afterwards. So basically the kids all work on one thing. So for example, when I taught about like bacteria last quad, then every student had a different bacteria that they were doing investigating in. And we looked at like where it is, that kind of stuff. Because I'm doing physics this time around and have a significant ESL population, I thought that it would be really beneficial to have um, like a physics glossary. So these are just key terms they're going to come across like motion, forces, distance, time, acceleration, um, and you name it, like the key kind of terms we'll talk about what's energy, what's work. And so just kind of giving them a, a glossary to come back to so that when they don't remember what a term is, then that's where that is. And I always do a sample slide. So this is my sample slide on physics.